So guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, last night, I really didn't sleep. Not an exaggeration, I slept zero minutes. I showed up today, I did terrible in my pre-presentation, partly because I've been working so hard these last few weeks that this was on the back burner. And that, to me, because this cause is so important, is disgusting. Because right now I have my community and I have communities around the country depending on you guys buying into what I'm gonna tell you about. Right now in the United States, there's a major public health epidemic that can be ended with one simple four to six minute test. It's that easy. Before I go and explain a little more about that test, about who we play for, and about how we can change the way the country looks at heart disease, I'm gonna ask you guys a couple questions. Can you please stand up if you physically have a heart in your chest? Like right here on the left side of your chest, there's a heart, please stand up. <laughs> Daniel Cooper, sit down, man, where you at? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, you guys can sit down. All right, now look to the person to your left and look to the person to your right. Shake their hand and introduce yourselves. <laughs> Perfect. So guys, my next question is if you have ever played a sport in middle school, in high school, um, if you were in dance, if you were in band, ROTC, anything that maybe required a... Um, a physical for, through the school or through a doctor, can you please stand up? Okay, you can sit back down. So this little machine over here, guys, this is called an echocardiogram, also known as an ECG or an EKG. It detects underlying heart conditions. It measures the electrical activity of your heart. It can check the lack of blood flow. Um, it can check the lack of oxygen. It can even sometimes detect a minor structural abnormality. If you ever got one of these before you played sports to protect your heart, and before you stand up, these look different in a hospital. It's like the same things happen, and you're, get, you're getting 12 stickers put on your chest. In four to six minutes, you're going to know exactly what's going on with your heart. But it looks a little different. Just heads up. This is a cardio screen, incredible piece of equipment. But can you stand up if you ever had an ECG or an EKG? Cool. You can sit back down. That's exactly the problem. Is that less than one-fourth of this audience, and that's being generous, just stood up and said they had an ECG and they played sports. That's why I lost my teammate, my friend, my brother, to sudden cardiac arrest. Underlying heart condition, four to six minute test, would have saved his life. So growing up, there's one thing I love more than anything in the world. I did it every single day. From my third grade years, when I first started playing club soccer, all the way to high school, I played soccer every day with the same group of kids, much like probably many of you. Through playing with those kids, I learned that they weren't my friends, they weren't my teammates, they were my brothers. They're still my best friends. They're still my brothers to this day. But we lost one of our own because he never had his heart protected. We didn't know as high school students that the physical that's given to middle schoolers and high schoolers in the United States is less than 1% effective at detecting heart conditions. We didn't know that in countries like Italy, Israel, and Japan, every single student athlete gets an ECG. We didn't know that every single collegiate athlete, every single professional athlete, every single Olympic athlete, um, the National Athletic Trainer Association, the European Society of Cardiology, um, many, many more strongly recommend or mandate that four to six minute test. We had no idea. So all too often in this country, we took the field and we watched our best friend collapse and die in the soccer field the day after he scored the game-winning goal. My little brother's best friend, um, a kid that looked to me as an older brother. We took that field that year, and we finished out the season, and we, adopt this, we adopted this mantra. The mantra was play for Rafe. It started as like a simple three-word battle cry 
You screamed at the top of your lungs when you knew you were outskilled for like every team we played pretty much when we got in the playoffs. Um, but we were dangerous. We were so dangerous because of it. And we were dangerous because we recognized that we had something we were playing for. So today as we go against the current, the only reason we have a chance is because we have something or someone we're playing for. So high school goes on through, we finish out soccer, we do some incredible things for Rafe and for our community. We begin to take this unexplainable tragedy and turn it into our trajectory. We start a scholarship, we give 15 scholarships, we donate AEDs, we teach CPR, but we get to college. <coughs> and when we were in high school, we were told sudden cardiac arrest in student athletes, sudden cardiac arrest in young, that doesn't happen. Young people's hearts just don't stop abruptly. This is not a thing. So as we come to college, we began to see more and more articles. It was almost as if we couldn't escape it. So one day, we met in Phi Tall's fraternity house, room 114. We called up all our boys, our teammates, our best friends. We filled the room. We sat down, we looked each other in the eyes and said, is this still something you guys think about every single day? Every single one of us said, absolutely. Not a day goes by we don't think about this. So we asked the question, can we do it? Can we create a national movement? We had absolutely zero clue what that looked like. I'm a business major. I got three degrees in business. I know nothing about really healthcare, short of studying this every single day. It's not even my passion. It's only my passion because of this. My passion is social change. But we knew that if we could convince people that this was a worthy cause, people like you, then we had a chance. We knew that with our Brevard County community, with the passion and the shared tragedy we went through together, that maybe, just maybe, a bunch of college kids could convince a bunch of adults to buy in on what we're doing, and then if one county bought in, maybe another county buys in. And then maybe if two counties buy in, maybe you, know, you get closer to a state buy-in. And if a state buys in, maybe the country buys in. So we had no idea what we were doing. We threw around names. We started with the Play for Rafe Foundation. That was the original name. The original goal was to do three things. One, place AEDs. When Rafe collapsed, we didn't have an AED. We had an AED in the front office. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what was going on. We thought maybe Rafe was having a seizure or an asthma attack. Two, train CPR. Fortunately, one of my brothers, Nino Holmes, and our coaches jumped on Rafe and immediately went through CPR. Three, screen hearts. So what we didn't know when we first initiated those three programs is that even if you perform CPR, even if you use an AED within five minutes, there's only a 38% chance that that person will survive. 38%. So we donated AEDs, we continue to train and teach CPR. But we took a step back, and we looked at the problem as a whole. And we said, are we best fit to put all of our resources into the symptom, which is sudden cardiac arrest, or the root, which is an underlying heart condition? And then we said, well, now we're making it pretty difficult on ourselves because that seems pretty hard to do. Provide screenings for people around the country. It's a lot easier just to raise money and donate AEDs. A lot easier. And it's very important nonetheless. But we wanted to get at the root, so we continue to push. With a guy named Frank Amadon here in Tallahassee, <clears throat> he pushed us to put on the first college-run heart screening in the country. We screened 175 young athletes right after the death of a Godby student and a FAMU student. We caught 11 heart conditions. Caught one life-threatening heart condition and a volunteer. One life-threatening heart condition. So to do that screening, we went back to our roots. The same stuff we talked about when we first named ourselves Play for Rafe Foundation. It was, we need to get the experts. Let's find the experts, let's get them to do what they do. So we hooked up with the Parent Heart Watch, which is an incredible organization made of families, teams, brothers, sisters, just like us around the country, who advocate to be the national voice 
for sudden cardiac arrest. And we found three organizations to come help deliver it. Some great people at Living for Burke, some great people in Orlando with Save Young Hearts, some phenomenal people in Texas with Cypress ECG Project. And after we delivered that heart screening, we began to start to talk more and more with the Texas organization. I shared with them how one issue I saw nationally with this movement is that we have so many people trying to reinvent the wheel. That I just went through this for two years, starting a nonprofit is hard, incredibly hard. Honestly, don't recommend it. Looking back, I don't recommend that. The amount of paperwork, learning, figuring out that came from it, what if we could just give people a way to make their immediate impact? What if we could give people a way to share their story, which is what we wanted to do? We didn't want to start a nonprofit. We just wanted to make an impact and share our story. That's it. So that is what led us to change our name to who we play for a year prior, because we wanted to represent every single team, every single community, every family that needed a voice, every family that needed someone, every, every team like us, every person that had been affected like us. So we ended up merging with this organization out of Texas, and in the most simple terms to put it, we had the why with who we play for, they had the what perfected. So I'm gonna tell you more about how those heart screenings look. I'm gonna tell you about the progression of our heart screenings, but I need two volunteers. I need one to come up for an ECG, and I need one to do the ECG. This is rigged, I need the two people we already set up, come on. <laughs> this is Kyle Batten, this is my boy Will. Give it to him, Will. So this ECG right here has actually already been done on Will before because he's a Florida State student, and he's also a Florida State football player. So at Florida State, every single student athlete gets an ECG. Every single one. Well, not club athletes. Oh, and not intramural athletes. But that's something we're working on, and if you stay tuned to who we play for at FSU, we'll be doing a heart screening for our campus April 8th. Check that on Instagram when he's done. <laughs> <coughs> so here's how our progression of heart screenings looked. When Ray first died, we partnered up with our local hospital. We told every Cocoa Beach student athlete if they wanted a free ECG to go get it. Second was the heart screening we did on a Saturday at Holy Comforter Episcopal School, also right after the death of two. Leon County students. Unfortunately, both those heart, screening, heart screenings had the same flaws in common. It's a lot to ask a parent, especially an underprivileged parent, to take an entire Saturday or take an entire afternoon to go to the hospital or even go to Holy Comforter, even if it's only a few miles. So we looked at this issue and we said, why is this becoming exclusive? Why is it that parents that care are only ones that are going to have their kids get their heart checked. Fortunately, Cypress CCG, now who we play for, had figured it out. The same way that students and student athletes get their eyes checked, the same way they get their ears checked almost every year, the same way they get their back tested for scoliosis, it's all in the school system. They bring it to the kids during the school day. So now the way we do heart screenings is we come to the school right there during the school day. Completely flexible, innovative program, whatever fits best for the school. We bring trained volunteers. We bring ECG machines. We bring those tables, and we bring the computers. So now this is how it looks. We'll provide the athletic trainer, the nurse, whoever's gonna champion it in their school that's HIPAA certified, all the materials they would possibly need to make this stupid simple, because that's what the kids deserve. We provide them with the promotional materials, the sample follow-up emails, um, a copy of every ECG, a list of local, rec a list of local um, referred cardiologists that we've already reached out to. <coughs> and now the way this works is when the students get the ECG, it's all Bluetooth right to that computer. Four to six minutes, Bluetooth that computer, done, next kid. They take 10 minutes out of class, now we know on an 89% to an 80 to 90% chance if they have a heart condition or if they don't have a heart condition. 
Once we finish screening hundreds of students, we then put it in a zip file and we send it right to our team of cardiologists, who are some of the best in the country. Those cardiologists out in Houston read it within two days, put a tag on it, labeling it low risk, labeling it follow up, or labeling it high risk. They then send it right back to the point of contact at the school, the nurse, the athletic trainer. So now that nurse uses the sample emails we've already provided them, the one-page consultation explaining what happened or what, the, what this means so us can understand it, and then the ECG in the email to the parents with the referred cardiologists in their community. So now, let's say we screen 100 kids. Let's say we catch one life-threatening heart condition, or let me backtrack, let's say we catch one high risk in one follow-up. Oftentimes, the follow-up looks like this. You did, the student athlete would need to go get checked in like two to three months, whatever the recommendation would be from the cardiologist. And then the high risk is this student needs to go check, get checked immediately before they take the field. This also does another thing which is really unique for our heart screening program. It empowers the school. We can't hold kids accountable, but the school can. I can't tell a kid if he can get on the field or not, but the coach can. And that's where the difference will be made. When people like coaches, when athletic trainers, when you guys understand the problem so you can be a part of the solution. How are we looking over here, Kyle? Pretty good. 15 more seconds. You want to show the audience the ECG? Or at least the camera? They can't see it, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Cool. All right. So that right there, that's done in Italy, Israel, Japan, middle school, high school athletes all levels of athletics in the United States outside of amateur. Four to six minute test. That's it. So I want to ask you guys another question. If you think that an ECG should be added on to the standard physical for middle school and high school athletes, if you think there's a way to figure it out and that we need to make it happen so we can protect thousands of students and student athletes every single year, please stand up. While you're standing, let me tell you this. Thank you for standing because we've screened 49,000 student athletes between four states. We've identified 60 life-threatening heart conditions and hundreds more of abnormalities that require yearly follow-up that could have one day led to the reason why heart disease is considered the leading cause of death in the world and in the United States. Know that the person's hand you shook, er <laughs> the person's hand you shook earlier, statistically speaking, one of you three will die from heart disease in your lifetime. Let's get to the root in student athletes. And then once we get to the student athletes, let's think maybe the trickle down effect happens where if we start protecting amateur athletes, maybe we'll start protecting everyone. It started with eye tests in schools, then it was ear tests, and then it was scoliosis. Now it's time to protect the hearts of all students, in particular, the group that's most at risk, student athletes. This picture behind me is a list, is a picture of the, the parent heart watch member brothers, sisters, children who died from sudden cardiac arrest. It's a small picture that encompasses thousands. I need you guys to understand that the same way we were the difference in our fraternity house brainstorming how can we be the game changer, it's all led up to this moment where we tell you, my job is nothing more than the Flint. I'm not a doctor. I will never go to med school. It's not something I'm interested in. But you guys, if you go home and you demand this standard of care for your community, for your brother, for whatever high school you went to, wherever that may be, whatever, whatever middle school you went to, then they'll find a way to supply it. And know that the 43 members of the Parent Heart Watch that provide heart screens between 25 states, we'll, we'll be doing every single thing we can every single day to make sure that every student in the United States is screened. Thank you.